Hey everyone, Wylock here. Thanks for joining me today. And today I'm going to build the extractor. I imagine this as a massive drilling platform that can be airdropped onto the surface of whatever planet you want to pillage from. This was the largest project I've ever undertaken by volume and it came out pretty well. Lately, I've been smitten with Eric's Hobby Workshop, a fellow YouTuber crafter tutorial type of dude. And uh, I love his methods, his aesthetics, his style in general is kind of similar to mine. But there's things that I can and have learned from watching him. Uh, his methods are sometimes more streamlined and look better than what I've come up with, so I wanted to try it out. So in continuance of this great hobby of ours, I will learn from what's out there, iterate on it and make it my own and take it to the next place. So let us go to the table. And remember that our sponsor is Heroes Horde for you 3D printers out there. Excellent selection, including all True Tiles lines. I found this Nerf gun at the thrift store for a few bucks, and unfortunately it's time is up. I like the front half of it, so it's outside to the chop saw for some major surgery. Turns out there were a few metal parts in there, but uh, I went slow, so it ended okay. Anyways, there's still some moving parts associated with this, so I just injected hot glue in the right spots to secure it all in place. My wife loves these drinks that come in a tall, skinny can. I told her to put aside eight of them, and here they are. At this point, I'm just kind of brainstorming the layout, seeing how much room there will be, thinking about practicality as well as playability. This is a bucket of pipe toys. It was like 30 bucks on Amazon, but it'll last me a lifetime of sci-fi projects. Lots of YouTubers use this exact brand, so I decided to dive in deep with the 500 piece kit. I played around with them to come up with the superstructure, and I also attached elbows to each can. These will be the receiver tanks for the drill, so it needs some way to store them and then drain the contents. Hot glue or super glue would work here. From the barrel of the gun, which is now my drill, there's some brand and model names. I just covered those up by hot gluing some cardstock over them. Also, I removed the tab and covered the top with a circle of cardstock. Now, lacking a coherent plan and wanting to keep my momentum going, I decided to go ahead and prime all these subcomponents so far, before assembly, and give them overnight to cure well. It also helps to do a once over with sandpaper on any smooth surfaces like toy plastic or aluminum cans. I experimented with a few approaches for basing the tanks. I know in the end I want an off-white finish, but I think I'm going to try out Eric's approach here. So base coating with burnt umber, then an overbrush with silver, metallic, and then I stippled on the off-white color. I left the top quarter inch or so exposed. The base is a 14 by 16 inch slab of double corrugated cardboard. I marked out dead center on it, and I was careful to place the drill such that the hole at the top was over center. So the drill itself is not centered, that hole in the top is. Cut out a hole in the middle of the base, hot glued some good cardstock onto the bottom. To cover all the corrugation, I used some food box cardstock, just ripping quarter inch wide strips and hot gluing them on. And then attach the drill with plenty of hot glue. I also clipped the four corners, one inch in, just something, I don't know. Now this ridged texture of the cardboard is going to show through the paint. So next I covered the entire base with more cardstock. This I attached with glue stick because white PVA glue could cause warping and hot glue is too thick and can't spread out for even coverage. 
The exposed area in the hole is supposed to be the ground below that the drill is going into, so I filled it with sculpta mold for texture. This is chipboard. It's much thicker than cardstock. It's the slab you find at the back of a legal pad, but I buy it in bulk. There's a link in the video description below if you're interested. Anyway, I cut half inch wide strips and glued them around the perimeter. This results in a very thin cavity on the underside, but it'll help prevent any warping or rocking now that all the weight is on the chipboard. In other words, none of the base itself is actually touching the table anymore. Next, I covered up all those seams and edges with more thin strips of cardstock and glue stick. And then for speed, I went out and sprayed again with dark brown. I forgot that I had this color. For the drill itself, similar technique to earlier. Silver overbrush, but then with this light blue-gray denim color, I uh, stippled that onto some of the surfaces. And to weather this thing up, I thought I'd play around with these environmental effects paints that Vallejo sent me a while back. There's all kinds of neat stuff in here, but in particular, the engine subseries is what drew my eye. Not gonna think about it, these two look good. Oil stains and petrol spills. First, I slathered the petrol spill all over it. It appears to be like a black wash, but it does behave differently. It pools up with itself, it doesn't really run, it's slightly glossy and oily, and it's a bit thinner than a shade would be. With all that still wet, I switched right over to the oil stains, which is sort of an orangey, rusty sort of color, and just dabbed a few spots on and let it mix and run naturally down just to see what happened. And what happened was a miracle. I mean, look at this thing. I love it. Holy cow, that is definitely a massive planetary drill in the grimdark future. Awesome. All right, so next I attach the eight tanks, loads of hot glue on the underside of the can, simple. Then I base coated the perimeter of the base with yellow, taped off hazard chevrons with model masking tape, and painted over black. Next up, light gray, two thin coats, just cheap craft paint all over the top. While that's drying, moment of truth, hot gluing on the pipe superstructure. Turns out it's just flexible enough that I could lift a leg a little bit and inject hot glue underneath and do one at a time. More base coating, all of that trim down on the base with silver, and also stippling that silver on random spots along the hazard lines. From here on, things really are gonna start to come together. So first up, black wash. This is just like two parts water to one part black acrylic craft paint. It does dry much lighter than it looks wet. And you can see here how rich I like it to be. I just slathered this over the entire base, including the hazard stripes. Moving on, more silver overbrushing of the pipes and the tank tops. Looking pretty good so far. Now back to that oil stain effect paint. I really liked that one. I'm trying it out on the pipes here, and I like it. And then the tank tops, still like it. And why stop? The entire body of the tank. Wow. Yes, now that is industrial grime. This is looking pretty sweet, and I should quit while I'm ahead. But I won't. Rust texture. Let's try this bad boy out. What I found works well with this stuff is to paint it on and then wick the border of it away with some paper towel or a clean brush. And that gives you a real nice feathered border. Stippling it on with a partially loaded brush also works really well. And I tried to focus it in areas where rust would collect, so at pipe joints and caps and things like that. For good measure, just for some color depth, I also hit the pipe superstructure. Just dabbing it on there and randomly blotting some of it off. Worked really well. Now I imagine the sheer force of this drill is going to cause, you know, clumps of earth and mud to spatter upwards. So I'm using white glue and sand to just make some clumps out on the deck. And that I painted up with just a rich coffee brown. 
dry brushed with a tan and washed it with black. Also notice this stencil next to my airbrush compressor that's been sitting there forever. Good opportunity to try it out, so I taped it on and airbrushed on some yellow. Not full coverage, probably should have done this before the black wash, but anyway, it came out looking all right. Going to chipboard now, I'm gonna assemble some steel eye beams. I cut strips that are 3 8 of an inch wide and just hot glued them together in an eye shape like this. I made a whole bunch of T shapes, again, just attaching with hot glue. And I painted these up as usual, base with burnt umber, overbrush with silver, and then hot glued them to the deck in between the receiver tanks. These are gonna support a walkway. And here's how I made that walkway. This is cross stitching mesh or canvas, sometimes called granny grating, can be found in the sewing section of any crafting store or even Walmart, Target, that sort of thing. Less than a dollar for a sheet. Anyway, it's smooth plastic, so first I primed it up. Then back to my food box card stock, I measured out one and a quarter inch wide pathways and then cut out the middles so that there's like a frame that's a quarter inch wide going all the way around, like you see here. Then I created a sandwich of cardstock, granny grating, cardstock. I used white tacky glue for this. PVA would also probably work fine. Hot glue does not work well on this plastic and super glue is gonna be too brittle. Once those are all done up, they simply get hot glued onto the iron girders. I actually made these little ones to bridge the top of the tanks, like so that more models could stand up there, but it kind of looks goofy, and it turns out that they're the exact right length I need down here between the tanks, so I'm gonna put them in there instead. Now that seems like a small thing, but for me, it was a big deal. On the fly, decisions like this are really not my style. I'm much a planner. I see it in my mind's eye and I know how I wanna execute it. I use a ruler for everything. Uh, I just, I enjoy precision, and making an on-the-fly decision like this is it's just really weird but i will say it felt good i'd never done anything like that before and i know i know it sounds so trivial but you get over that ocd-ness and if you're that kind of crafter like me i can tell you what i've been doing recently it's been very freeing uh, it's open the floodgates so if you have crafter's block right not writer's block but crafter's block just break your boundaries break your habits because i can tell you it is paying off for me here it is in context, it's under siege from some Eldar and Ultramarines holding them off. I didn't try, but I think you could fit two rhinos in there side by side, and the width was unintentional, it just happens to look really good there. You can see the walkways were actually specifically sized to accommodate 40mm bases for terminators and such. My original plan was to have a second walkway three inches further above that one, and then another platform up top on the superstructure, but Again, snap decisions. I decided not to because this looked and felt good. The players do need to be able to get their hands in there and I think that would have just been too congested. There's enough here to be interesting. There's enough horizontal space to have interesting tactical decisions and whatnot. And since we've come this far in the video and you've seen the extractor a lot, I figured as usual, I'll just show you some models while we're here. Recently finished speed painting these Eldar tanks. They took about two hours a piece and the void shield generator from a previous episode. I'll throw a card on the screen. And I know I've been raving about these Vallejo FX paints, but I mean, the result speaks for itself. Look at that. I am highly, highly impressed. This was also the first time I've ever tried to approach a project thinking about a story. Usually I go after functionality or just something that looks cool, but it is nice to have like lore behind it. It really does inform your design process and your decision making. I know most people probably do it that way by default, it's just not how I'm wired, so again, it's been an exercise for me. Another thought that just occurred to me is that the pipe superstructure kind of prevents large base flyers from occupying this space, so they can't really land there. It's kind of unintentional, but this ends up being a total obstacle for them. And there's still opportunity here. I can add on to it later. Ladders, computer terminals, valves, whatever. That's for another day. So again, remember, if you like this particular project, you're gonna love Eric's Hobby Workshop. Go find him on YouTube, watch, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. 
Also, tons of links in the video description below, including a link to the Tabletop Crafters Guild on Facebook. 33,000 strong and growing. We would love to have you. Also, here's two more videos I think you'll like based on today's project. So I am Wylock, and until I see you next time, thanks for watching Make Things and Play Games.